843, Big 550, KTRS. Larry from uh, First Rule and Pelopidus. He's uh, down in the basement with his uh, ma- with his uh, lab coat on and his mm-hmm. mad glasses and your hair sticking straight up on end. Generally, yes. Looking for the uh, latest and greatest in technology. Good morning, Larry Stenabach. Hey, good morning, McGraw. How are uh, you doing? What is, uh, what's going on? So, hey, uh, you know, we've been talking a lot about encryption recently, uh, especially in the wake of the Paris attacks. Right. We had a lot of governments saying, basically, we need back doors and encryption. Encryption's bad because it stops us from doing our so, job. So, so basically what this encryption is, is two people download an app and you and I essentially, can, yeah. can talk through mm-hmm. this app and nobody can hack into it. Uh, essentially what they've done is they've encrypted it with a hash or uh, some different form of encryption that this app does for you so it makes it easy to use. And essentially all modern encryption, even the encryption that's on your credit card or your bank account, essentially encrypts it with such a long number that the idea is you don't have enough time or computing power to ever figure it out. It might take you a million years to decrypt. Okay. So, um, but, but one of the things, as, as a computer engineer and as a tech person, Person, I think one of the, the striking things about recent news is the call for the kind of these back doors into encryption or that encryption's bad. It's kind of painted in a bad light. Right. And, and to me, that's very weird uh, because encryption is the only thing that keeps us safe from the bad guys. Explain that. Uh, so, for example, your bank account. The difference between why your bank account would do an encrypted bank account uh online site versus not is the difference of taking your bank your money physically and putting it in a bank vault versus putting it in your front uh, mailbox right it, it's literally the right. same you thing. wouldn't you wouldn't put ten thousand dollars cash in your mailbox Correct. but you'd put a check for ten thousand dollars in the bank well and, and people seem to think about telephones and u.s mail differently let's say than online communications and in fact especially with telephone it's going over the same lines it's the same data feed so so if someone said hey you know if the government said hey you know we really need to read every piece of private U.S. mail that's sent just to make sure that no terrorists are using the private U.S. mail in order to communicate, uh, I think people would have a pretty big backlash. However, um, these same people are Mm -hmm. using this to um, sort of talk to the terrorists and Mm -hmm. sort of, um, you know, coordinate attacks. Sure. They're also coordinating attacks in person and, and many other ways, too. I think my biggest concern is attacking private communication among citizens uh, is, is actually more dangerous, and I think there's other ways to find these terrorists. But if the government... Let me, let, let me, let me press you on this. Sure. If the government says, look, Larry, I don't care that, that you're using encryption with mm-hmm. your bank. Knock, knock yourself out. But sure. I want a back door mm-hmm. on these other things to see if you're communicating with somebody in... Saudi Arabia. This is one of those things they always ask for. And occasionally there's been history of this happening between governments. And historically, it backfires every time. Because say it's like saying, ah, oh, uh, the government's saying, everyone in the United States needs to leave a window open in their house. Just so the police can come in and do random checks anytime they want to. Uh, what ends up happening is it's not the government or the police or the good guys that use that back door. It's the bad guys. You've left a hole and welcome mat out for bad guys looking for that back door and they intentionally find it. Let me give you a good example that was in the news this week, one of the biggest hacks uh, that's happened recently and all because a company did not use encryption at all. Uh, uh, so VTech, which is a, one of the largest children's toy manufacturers, uh, got hacked luckily by what's called a white hat hacker this week, so a good guy hacker. So they, they, they their job is to sort of point out when companies fail to live up and do their end of the social contract or even a general contract. Okay. So uh, VTech's a Hong Kong global distributor of electronics for kids. They have a lot of like InnoTab, little children's safe tablets. Okay. In this data breach, he was able to see that everything in their systems was not encrypted. They had got information on 6.4 million children, including pictures, names, addresses, and 5 million of their parents information. It, uh, and just to give you an idea of how many pictures, because these things have cameras, these little toys, uh, 190 gigabytes worth of pictures. That's hundreds of thousands of photos of these children. So you bought this this device, your kids mm-hmm. used it, and this hacker was able to hack into this device, see the pictures, and then get in, in, in the information of the parents on this device. So basically the parents set up what's like a VTech account, like an online account for the kids right. to use the devices, and the devices integrate with that account. They upload to the server. So he was actually able to hit the servers of VTech that store all this information. So VTech housed it, but they didn't encrypt it at all. They didn't lock it up in a safe. They left it out on the street for anybody to find. And luckily, the person that found it was a good person. So this is an example where you'd want encryption on this so that your child's information, their photos, weren't publicly available to anybody or any hacker that wanted it. But again, if the government says, hey, we mm-hmm. need an ability to sort of find the bad guys, mm-hmm. 
most of us would say, hey, look at our email. We don't care. Or, or mm. do some type of algorithm that if I'm using words and you sort of look at my email or some mega data sort of scan, mm -hmm. what do I care? Um, you're saying that's not the way it's going to work in the future. I, I think that's it might end up being the way it works in the future, but I think it's bad. And the reason being is, again, it, it, it the, the holes you make in security, the holes you make encryption, inherently break encryption. They make it useless because there's a key, a back door, a back pass, and the people that end up using that historically are not the good guys. They're actually the bad guys. Well, that now you're now that, that that's like a, a Hollywood movie, right? It, but it happens. <laughs> it happens. You're intentionally leaving a security flaw unpatched did in you, order to let people. Did in. you ever see the movie War Games? Yes. Yes. Joshua. Global Thermal Nuclear War. <laughs> Joshua. Joshua, yes. would you like to play a game? A game. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Some wicked tic tac toe. Uh, there you go. So. All right. Um, that's Larry Stanaback with uh, First Rule and Pelopidus giving us something to uh, think about. Larry, thanks for checking in. Thanks, guys. Uh, 850, Big 550, KT.